What's up, everyone? You're probably... What's up, everyone? You're probably watching this because you saw my college reaction video. Oh. My. God. Dude. And a bunch of you guys were asking for my stats that got me into UCLA, so I just want to make a quick video. So this is about me. I went to a large public school in San Diego, California, and I had a class size of around 620. And I'm a white boy slash man. I'm still figuring that out, but I don't know if that is even taken into consideration in college decision process anymore. So I applied to UCLA as a math of computation major. This is basically just computer science and math. My academic history, this is probably the longest section. Oh wait, never mind. So my unweighted GPA in high school was 4.0 and my weighted GPA was just around 4.4. It was like around 435 when I applied to college, but the UC GPA is different than only taking to consideration sophomore and junior year for your weighted ones so i also took nine ap classes in high school i don't know if i said that right so freshman year i didn't take any i i just came out of middle school it was also my COVID year so maybe it would have been a little easier to take an ap class but i didn't and sophomore year i took two which was ap calc ab i ended up getting a five and ap euro and i got a four and my teacher quit the job after the first quarter. So for a month, we had like a temporary sub when we were playing ping pong. So I don't know how I pulled that off. Junior year, I took four APs. This is usually the most APs you'll take is your junior year. So I took Calc BC and I got a five. It's the first AP test I looked at. So I was like, okay, I'm building momentum, but it actually goes downhill from here. So yeah, I took Physics C Mechanics, I got a three. And I took Physics C, E, and M. I got a three. These were back-to-back -back tests. I think 90 minutes each, so three hours straight. Worst shit of my life. And then I also took CSP. This is like, I can't even explain. There's no curve on the test. I feel like most people get a three. I actually had the, my reaction to this on my phone. Maybe I can find that. I convinced myself I was not going to get into a good college because of these scores. And maybe it did play some role in some of our rejections, but the UCs don't look too deep into your test scores rather than your passions and accomplishments. So that honestly probably helped offset not terrible scores, but mediocre scores for like a high caliber college. So my senior year, I took three APs. I took CSA. I got a four. I took stats, I got a four, and I took APEL, I got a four. And this APEL credit comes in super clutch because I was able to skip an English class here. And keep in mind that these colleges didn't even see the test scores from your senior year. So if you want to take like a like an AP class that's like really connected to your major and you want them to see that you're like really capable, I'd maybe take like your junior year so that they can actually see like you got a five on that or something. And also when you're a senior, and you're applying to college, you can see the AP scores from your senior year two days early on your college portal since you linked your college board account. So just a little tip. All right, here's like my actual test score. So I took the SAT my junior year, August. I grinded the whole summer, solid 1380. Then locked in, locked in a little. Took the PSAT out of 1410, decent. I got National Merit Commended student status. It's like right below National Merit. It's like top 2% instead of top 1%. But I think I was just right on the cutoff of the bottom to get. I think if I got 10 less, I wouldn't have gotten it. So I'm like, okay, comparatively, this is like way better than I did the first time. Next month, I take the SAT again. I time my score, 1380, but maybe I can super score. I super score it. I get a 1390. I, I couldn't even break the 1400. I was like, what the hell is wrong with me? I gave up on my dream of going, getting a good SAT score. I have test optional. I'm fine with that. Go next summer. My mom is insistent I take the SAT again because of some article she read that like shows it's like most people that get into good colleges have a good SAT score, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I grind the whole summer, sweat, tear. Actually, nah, I didn't, I didn't do that like crazy. Maybe a little less than the year before, honestly. I take my test August, I think like two weeks after my school started. I got a 1520, yeah. 740 reading, writing, 780 math. And now I'm at UCLA, UCs are test blind, so they didn't even take this into account. But scoring high in reading, writing can actually take you out of like the intro writing class. So I guess I skipped two writing classes already. I don't know how well worth 
the time is for SAT if like you want to go to a UC, but I guess it can help. It like helps you like think better. I don't know, whatever. All right, now I'm going to go into my activities. I'm just going to say the activities I put in the same order that I did on my application. Most people put 15 activities from most important to least important, and then they put the last five as awards for most important to least important. I don't know, you could probably sprinkle in the awards if you think they're really important, but that's just how I did it. My first EC that I put was Northrop Grumman HIP. This is just a partnership program I applied to, and it's between high schoolers and the Northrop Grumman company. And I got to work on almost a school year long project and attend different panels on like Northrop Grumman site. And this actually led to me getting my internship after my senior high school summer. Second is UCSD MAP. And this is another mentorship program I applied to through UCSD, where I got to work under a professor and my sector was in IT services and I got to work on an app. Third was engineering club. And I helped found this at my high school and we did small engineering tasks on school and did outreach to elementary schools to work on different projects. All right, fourth is Rose Holman Operation Catapult. And this is a summer program I applied to where I coded a video game under a professor and it was voted best project on the camp. Fifth is USC Biomechanics Project. And this was a project I did for a summer that one of my teachers helped guide. And we used Python to create like vector overlays for athletes. And yeah, it was under the guidance of USC basically through my teacher to me. Sixth was varsity tennis. I played on my varsity tennis team for four years and I wrote about captain position and winning CIF. And honestly, like not all your top activities have to be like super academic. They can like just show you putting a time commitment into something and having passion for something and actually having effective outputs. The activities kind of go down from here. What's good, bro? You recording? Yeah. <laughs> Say what's up. What's good? I'm tired, bro. All right. Eighth, I was surgery technician. Basically, I just did some administrative work and set up surgery rooms at a dentistry. And this was pretty early on in high school, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, to be honest. So, He's yeah. not him. He's not him. <laughs> this guy hated on everything, bro. He's not him. Bro, you got me off track now. <laughs> uh, you can edit it out. All right, yeah, you can. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can kind of notice the activities get less strong as we go down. And this is fine since it's just hard to juggle so many like difficult, strong commitments. So next up is Spike Ball Club, number nine. And I helped found this school at my club. And it was actually as a joke that we made this, but it turned out to become really popular. And we even organized a tournament. And end of the school year, the club actually won club of the year. So I don't know, it's just kind of funny. Thank Eat you. Him. That's the only good thing on his resume. The Spike Ball Club. Yeah. That. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wait, I don't it. think we can cut on YouTube. No, you can say whatever you want. Oh, okay. I'm not monetized yet. Okay. Subscribe to get me monetized. Number ten is NSLC at UC Berkeley, and I misspelled this on my application. Maybe that's that's why I didn't get into Berkeley. Like I spelled it without the E at the end, but it was just an engineering program I did there, and it was also early on in my high school, so it helped me get into like what I do now. Took a quick break, but I'm back now. I just had a, yeah, we're restarting that shit right now. <laughs> All right, 11th activity was beach volleyball varsity. So I played on that for three years and I just joined for fun with some friends, but I actually stuck to it for a lot longer than I expected. All right, number 12 is piano. And yeah, I just mentioned the hobby and I used to play a lot up until COVID, but- I don't think she's Asian. What the, f <laughs> I actually might have to cut that shit out. Really? Ah. Oh. <laughs> Why are people sensitive? Sorry. But I hated it so much, so I quit and I picked it up later in high school by myself and I actually enjoyed it. So yeah, I just talked about it, honestly. And I just noticed that like, just talk about some sh some stuff that you like. <laughs> and, and like, I guess uh, it works. What is so funny, bro? All right, number 13 is Fishing Club. And I helped found this club also. And we just talked about fishing and it's honestly kind of just a troll club. It's that white people stuff. This guy has rate. Everything has to do with race with this guy. <laughs> that white people stuff. Uh, I'm telling you, dude. It was just something I genuinely enjoyed. So I wrote about it again. And that's like something similar to like my later activities. Just stuff that I enjoyed doing. 
Number 14 is peer counseling. And this is a club on my school that I was part of. I don't, I didn't really enjoy it, but it wasn't that good. So it was pretty late on. And I was in the awareness portion. So we kind of just promoted awareness through activities like Red, Wib Red, Red Ribbon Week. All right, number 15 is photography. And I talked about this because it was something I was genuinely into. Like I was actually like thinking about using my camera all the time. Like, I don't know, it was weird. I didn't know how much the admissions people would mess with it. So I just talked about it, like how I like to capture unique experiences with my camera. All right, now the last five are awards. My awards honestly kind of lack, and this probably could have been what held also held me back from some other colleges. I'm just be straight up with myself, like they're kind of mid. So for the first one is the National Merit Commended Student Status. It's not even the highest status for PSAT takers. It's given top 2%. I kind of talked about that earlier. The second one I have is AP Scholar with Distinction just average 3.5 on the AP test with a score of at least three on four or more tests. Third, I have National Honor Society. Just be a decent student at your school and apply it and it'll probably be in. And my fourth is my tennis MVP. And then fifth is student of the week. Nothing crazy, honestly. I wouldn't say like hurt me, but this is not something that stood out in my essays. Next section is the essays. I was just gonna give a brief summary of my essays. And if you guys wanna hear about the whole thing, just let me know. The first PIQ I picked was number one, which is describe an example of your leadership experience in which you have positively influenced others, help resolve disputes or contribute to group efforts over time. So for this essay, I just talked about the first outreach event I did with my engineering club. I talked about the egg drop challenge we did and kind of how helping people for the first time actually affected me as a person. I kind of had a major egg theme throughout my essay. It's like a little corny, but I don't know. It helped it flow together better. Next one I did is PIQ6, which is think about an academic subject that inspires you and describe how you have furthered this interest inside and or outside of the classroom. So this was probably my weakest essay. And I talked about how during COVID, I was super immersed in the gaming world and kind of how I transitioned that into some of my other activities and even making my own video game at Operation Catapult, which I had talked about in my activity section. I then discussed about wanting to be involved with AI in the future, kind of flowed together a little better in the actual essay, but 350 words. The next essay I did was PIQ7 and it is what have you done to make your school or community a better place. This was probably my best essay. I kind of talked about how I often used to seek mentorship from a family friend and his eventual passing led me to become involved with his nonprofit. For this, I went to Mexico to give some small coding lessons to some kids in orphanages. Phil, like the exact kids Phil told me stories about and I never went while he was alive, unfortunately. PIQ8 was beyond what has already been shared in your application. What do you believe makes you a strong candidate for admissions to the University of California? Uh, uh, this is honestly just like a super open-ended question and you can literally talk about whatever you want. So for this, I just made a shortened version of my Common App essay. And I just removed some parts I already touched on in like earlier in my application, extracurricular section also, since I have a lot more space for extracurriculars on the UC apps. And since I had to make it three words, 300 words shorter, so like basically half the length since it was 650 originally. This is honestly a fine thing to do, especially since I really like my personal statement, I think it was called. And I kind of talked about my family history and my life moving forward. It's like, it's hard to summarize 700 words in a sentence, but that, that's my attempt. Now, here's my advice. It's pretty simple, just apply. There's a little more than that, obviously, but just like be genuine in your essays. And here, this is something big. Don't exaggerate the hours in your extracurricular section. The admissions officers have read thousands of essays and they can tell when something is just off or not true. They can also add. So if your ECs times don't add in, into a normal day, this is usually just an instant rejection. Like if you say you work 80 hours a week on some nonprofit, most people work only 40 hours a week on their actual job. So it just, it doesn't make sense to lie and they can tell. Also spend a good amount of time into your essays, but don't burn yourself out because that just makes the writing worse and it brings you to a point of like diminishing returns, honestly. So don't do that. So start reasonably early, like two months. You have to start during the summer. That's crazy. I know some people have done that. Like, I guess it works, but it's like almost unnecessary and it stresses out the people around you because oh, you started already. And then now they feel like they're behind. It's fucking, you're chill, you're chill. I'm not talking about a year, just a few months before it's due, two months. You're good. Have people proof your essays, but not too many, since you don't want too many cooks in the kitchen. I know people that have like eight people read their essays and just convolution. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, I'm honestly really happy a bunch of you guys wanted me to do a stats video. And I never thought my video would get as many views as it did, honestly, because I just did it for fun. Honestly, I was debating on not even posting it, but I looked at some of the reactions there. It's kind of funny. So I was like, I'm just do it.
and I also filmed a day in my life. I haven't started editing that, but I'm going to post that soon so you can look out for that and appreciate all of you for watching.